asking Christians lately uh, the question, um, how do you, as a Christian, you personally, not, not a person, how do you know that you are not a brain in a vat? Tom's pointing Sean in the right direction. It's not for Sean. He says less than one minute. That serious question. Well, I, I would have an argument. Why? Yes, just, it is a very. Dish. Yes, serious it is question. a serious question. Not... I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. Okay. Then what conditions must exist in order for uh, a brain to be able to exist in an event? Because we have to have the possibility of the actuality in order to entertain it. So don't you think it's incumbent upon the one asking the questions to say, well, here are the conditions by which that could be uh, offered as a validity. So let's, what are those conditions then? So we can see if, they're, if it's cogent. The brain. So is it one brain in a vat or more than one brain? Is it all Christians no, just, or just one Christian? You're not the so, only person who's in a vat. There could be other people in a vat. Probably, yeah, other okay. people like Matrix style. Okay, so... I'm just asking about are, you. Are there, How do you... Okay. So uh, are there, there other, vein, other brains of that? So there, is there a... Uh, uh, that owner. Uh, someone made the vat, yeah. So the vat owner technician. Okay. So, <clears throat> and what's the purpose of this? Uh, to say, how do we know we're not just a brain in a vat? Does that mean there is no God? Is that what the argument? What's the goal of it? Well, I don't. I don't think it means that. Do you? Just asking. What's the goal? Because in the Christian worldview, it's not possible. So what they're saying is, well, we're going to abandon the Christian worldview to have you argue. And so that's inconsistent for my position. So I have to see what the parameters are within yours. How so? By asking you what the parameters are of what yours are. No, but why, why but you is said it that possible? On you said it, it's con are you saying it's inconsistent with the Christian worldview. But <clears throat> let's see. I can see the Christian God being true under your worldview. And also you've been put in... You are, Matt Slick, are a brain in a vat somewhere. And outside of that vat, the world is as as we typically think of it, and you're a brain in a vat. <clears throat> Sean, you're scared. How so, can you not say anything? So does that... Why uh, do you keep doing that? So if I'm just a, vein, a, a brain in a vat... Now, here's a question. Uh, when, if the brain were to die, do I cease to exist? It's an important question in this scenario. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because if I cease to exist, <clears throat> then that would imply materialism or what's called property dualism, which means then that I would be nothing more than the chemical reactions in my brain, which is restricted to the laws of physics and chemistry. But then that would undergird or undermine, I should say, the issue of knowing whether or not it could be or could not be. Because if that was the case, materialism, it, we, I wouldn't be able to know or not know because it's just chemical reactions in the brain. So that scenario then negates itself and kind of invalidates the whole question. If, on the other hand, you say uh, uh, it's property or substance dualism, where the soul is separate or the mind is separate from the, the brain, then you're presupposing a supernatural kind of ability in that. And then you're saying that the physical brain is what restricts the, the spirit and that the brain must exist in that by a scientist who uh, is then working this, which still doesn't negate the idea of Christianity being true or anything. It just... You know, so, no, but he he wasn't. Yeah, I don't think that, that substance that dualism has anything to do with this question at all. I just think. Yeah, like, just, what's the methodology you use tangent. to know that you're not a brain? Because in a substance vat, dualism man. could be true, and you could be a brain in a vat. And substance well, dualism then, could not be true, and you could be a brain in a vat. If I'm a brain in a vat, then you guys don't exist. That's well, that just, doesn't like, follow. Yeah, but it doesn't not, follow in any case. One at a time, or I don't talk. Okay, let me oh, let me take care of this first, then real quick, then Matt. <clears throat> so um, let's see. Godless, I don't think can control herself. She's just busy chasing Sean, so I'm gonna move her. No, no, you're not. Um, let's see. Anybody else have trouble controlling themselves? I don't know who unsolved is. I forgot who that is. So I'm just gonna move them. Uh, Bill Brown is as always best behavior okay now I've, I've kicked out most of the um interrupters matt now secondly amongst us uh, i know i started it but i don't have to conclude it 
we need to elect a champion who is going to be your main interlocutor so we can further reduce interruptions. Um, Jack seems like he really wants to pursue this. Would you be willing to, you want to, you want to take point on this, Jack? Well, you seem like you were doing a good job. Okay, but all right, I'll, I'll take, I'll continue. So at some point, Matt, I may, um, see the rest of the time or hand it off to someone else. Okay. If we re read some kind of dead end or something like that. So anyways, um, it seems like dualism being true or not true doesn't really matter because under either scenario, you could logically be a brain in a vat. I even think you could be in a, a brain in a vat if Christianity is true. So I don't see what the dualism aspect has to do with anything. Do you understand what materialism is? Yeah. Do you understand that the physical brain would then be restricted to the laws of physics and chemistry? Yeah, sure. Does that not necessitate that the, the uh, sensory input to that brain would then produce a necessary chemical reaction? Uh-huh then how do you know that the necessary chemical reactions are producing truth? That's irrelevant. Your brain may just say that. Yep, it did. So, but we're under your view, right? So under your view, it is not the case that your brain made you say what you just said. Under your view, the Christian view, it is not the case that these chemical reactions are just like dominoes that are just causally in, involved in some sort of causal chain. Under your view, the Christian God is true, and all that's false. And you could be a brain in a vat. So back to the issue you just dismissed. If you want to go with uh, sub uh, property dualism, which is necessitated out of materialism, you're just telling me then that if that scenario is the case, the parameters of the scenario, then the scenario negates its own validity. You couldn't know if the scenario is true because the materialistic view re necessitates certain chemical reactions. And you wouldn't know if the chemical reactions, uh, even asking the question or positing the idea of a brain in the vat is true or not true. So this is why materialism in that scenario um, undermines itself. And so it makes the, uh, the question incoherent if you presuppose uh, materialism like that. Okay. The question is not incoherent, and I'll repeat the question. I didn't ask why, how do I, Tom Rabbit, know I'm not a brain in a vat? If you're confused, let me just clear up any confusion. I never said anything of the sort. I asked, how does Matt Slick, who holds to the Christian worldview, how do you know that you are not a brain in a vat? You, who do not believe in materialism, you who do believe in uh, substance dualism, I asked you how you know that you're not a brain in a vat. So anything that has to do with me, my worldview, materialism is com completely irrelevant. And any objection you make about, well, how would you know is simply an epistemic concern and is completely irrelevant. So I'll ask the question again. How do you, Matt Slick, know that you are not a brain in a vat? Before I answer, are you, let me clarify. Are you saying you want nothing more than an internal critique, not an external critique? I just want to know how you know you're not a brain in a vat. I would, I would assume that critique. you're going to do that. I, mean, I assume that, that you're going to do that from your own position. You want an internal critique. You see, how do it's I not know? A, from... It's not a critique. It's an explanation of your position. You done? Yes, sir. So you want my position explained from the Christian worldview. It's an internal critique. I'm verifying that. It's not an external critique. Is that correct? That's correct. Not necessarily yeah. your world, like the Christian worldview, but your Matt Slick's view. Matt Slick's view. So go ahead. In the Christian in the Christian worldview, God is not a deceiver. And so therefore we are not brains and vats. Yeah, but God's not doing the deceiving. The mad scientist is, right? The person who put you in the vat, right? I can walk up to you 
and I can tell you and deceive you, right? And and according to your logic that you just gave me for why you're not a brain in a vat, if I deceive you, then the Christian God is not true. So surely you don't want to say that. So I'll ask you again, how do you know you're not a brain in a vat? You're doing an external critique. You're asking no, the truth. Value. That's an external critique. When you ask a truth value, you're using it from an external. I gave you the external, the internal position. This is why it's very clear. You want an ex internal or external? That's what I specifically internal. asked you. Then internal critique, God is not a liar. He has said that when we die, we go be with him. And he has stated that the soul is something that is extant in the body itself, just as Christ himself was that. Therefore, this is what he has stated about us. Therefore, it's not possible that we're just brains in a vat. Yep. And everything that you just said could be true and you're a brain in a vat. Because See, God, I'm not, go. just, to, just to be clear, I'm not saying that God puts you in the vat. I'm not saying that God is controlling the electrodes. Those are all not God. Just the same way if I go up to you on the street and scam you with a fake Rolex, God did not scam you with a fake Rolex. I scammed you with a fake Rolex, okay? So I'm telling you, God is not the one who is part of the causal chain who has put you in the vat. That's just a dude. So I'll ask you again, how do you know you're not a brain in a vat? Do you want an internal critique cancer? Do you want an external critique cancer? Internal. Then the internal critique is that God puts the soul in the human body, not in a vat. That's what God has, has revealed in scripture. That's the Christian perspective. So you either accept it or you reject it. If you reject it, you're rejecting it on an external view. What's your external qualification? I'm not rejecting it. It's not true. Yes, you are. Because the internal view, I've given it to you internally. It is not possible for your scenario to be true. Logically? Look, I'm already uh, repeating myself to you. This is not that difficult. An external critique is where you offer some validity or verification outside the internal worldview. In the internal worldview of Christianity, God has stated in the scriptures, we can see it in the person and work of Jesus Christ, God in flesh, who died on the cross, rose in the death three days later, that the soul is part of who and what he is. He's the firstborn from creation, and he is the perfect man. We are made in the image of God. He reflects that image, Genesis 126, Hebrews 1, 3. So therefore, we are not uh, brains in vats. Otherwise, um, we would not have an, uh, a biblical position. No, no, I didn't say we, okay. as in people, are brains in vats. I never said that. I said you, specifically, are a brain in a vat. There could be other brains in vats. There are. Let's just say that there are other brains in vats, possibly. It doesn't have to be everyone. You're just, you're just a brain in a vat in a garage somewhere, right? And what you said about scripture saying that God puts souls into people and therefore internally it is illogical, it doesn't work. That's false. You could have been born Matt Slick. You could have been had your soul put into your body. And later on the road, some guy came along, put your brain into a vat. And that's all completely logical. So I'll ask you again, how do you know you're not a brain in a vat? Tom, but, Tom, but you've already blown it and you're just not making any sense. Of That's this. not a refutation, so Mr. We can move Slick. on. That's not a refutation, Mr. I've Slick. already given you. I already, I already gave you the answer. I could show you it was an external, internal critique. You're going external. I'm not going external. And you external. don't understand the difference. Yes, you are. You just said souls put in a body is illogical. It deal, that, that you just said no, that. No, no, no. I, I said it's logical. I wrote it down. I wrote down what you said. That's what you said. Put, God putting souls in the body, you said, is illogical. No, that's, that's not, an external that's not critique. What I said. That's not what I said. I wrote it down. I don't Don't care. lie. Oh, now you're going to accuse me of lying. I wrote it down. Therefore, it's true? I wrote what you said down. You you could say I misspoke. Well, that's fine. We move on. I don't have a problem with that. I don't believe I misspoke. misspoke. I'll just give it to you, though. We'll sort it out later, right? I'm saying there, there's nothing. It is completely logical that you were born Matt Slick. Your soul was put into Matt Slick's body. Later, someone came along, put your brain into a vet. Boom. Done. It's perfectly logical. So it's logical. Meaning that, that there's no contradiction. My, 
meaning that God, that someone extracted my physical brain. And now it's logical that my physical brain is actually in a, a, a vat right now. Yeah, that's right. That, that's your position. Yeah, that's right. So tell me how it's logically the case that my brain is in a, a, a vat someplace. Yeah, it doesn't entail a contradiction. Done. I didn't ask that. I said, show me that it is the case. No, you said, show me how it's logical. Show me how it's logical that it is the case. Show me how. Yeah, the logical, it's, it being logical is established by there not being a contradiction. Done. So it's also not a contradiction then by your logic to say that God is the one who made the soul, put it in the body, and does not say that it's even possible or negates the idea of it being in a vat. That's also logically possible. So now we have logical possibilities contradicting each other. So now which one's true? What's the contradiction? Both cannot be true if they make each other uh, impossible. Yeah, what are the possible. two? What They're are Christian. The you say it's possible that I could be a brain in a vat. I'm telling you the Bible says it's not possible. So which one is it? No, the Bible says that souls go into human beings, and that's perfectly compatible with you being a brain in a vat. Can you show me where the scripture says souls go into human beings? Well, I'm just taking that. I thought that's what you said. I thought, that the, I thought you were paraphrasing a scripture where it says that the Bible says that God puts the soul into human bodies or something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that he speaks to us in his word and that Jesus Christ, God in flesh, obviously is not a brain in a vat because that's the Christian perspective. That's the internal critique, the internal analysis. So Jesus, the firstborn from the dead, Colossians 1, he is the first one. He is the one who is the representation of God, the exact representation. Hebrews 1, 3. So we look at who Christ is because we are to be like him. If he is a brain in a vat, then we could be brains in a vat. But I'm not a brain in a vat because he's not a brain in a vat. So your scenario doesn't work. It cannot be the case that it's true that I can be a brain in a vat and also not the case that I can be a brain in the vat. Okay. Now that would that'd be interesting true. if anywhere during this conversation, I asked you whether or not Jesus could be a brain in a vat, but I didn't. And Jesus has done many things that you will never be able to do. Okay. So you asked about the Christian worldview. Yeah, that's right. He's, this is a Christian worldview. I just told you what the Christian worldview is, and then what you do is you reject it, and you go to an external critique. So you're, you keep doing this, and I keep exposing you on this. I keep showing this to you. You continue to go back to the same error. What is the, what is it, the, what's the external critique that I'm committing, Matt? You apply the laws of logic, which you can't justify from an atheistic perspective anyway, and then you apply them inside the... In, the uh, Bible and, and the uh, Christian worldview and say, this isn't possible, or you say it is possible. Well, that's what you said. It's, it is logically possible within the scriptures. Well, no, it's not. Because God tells us that we are simply in human bodies, not brains and vats. It cannot be both the case that we're not in physical bodies and also the case that we are in physical bodies, since the Bible tells us that we are made in physical bodies. Therefore, the worldview that you're offering is a possibility in the Christian worldview cannot be the Christian worldview. This is the problem that you're having. You, I keep showing you this. You keep going back to this. Yeah, because it's, I can see that we are part. made in physical bodies. And your brain could have been taken out of that made physical body. And I will say that I saw this conversation is probably is on a timer now because I heard you reference the first inklings of an attempt to nuke the conversation from orbit saying that I can't account for logic or something like that. But surely that wasn't, what's funny is that was prompted by you um, asserting that I was uh, committing an external critique. However, logic is also there under the Christian worldview also. So that would be an internal critique. So, uh, no, look, Yeah. The Bible tells us that uh, God, 
you know, creates the soul and moves us and, and forms us in the womb and the physical body is how we're born. That's what the Bible te teaches. And you're saying it's not the case. It's a logical possibility. It cannot be since the Bible says it's, it's, uh, that we're in physical bodies. So that means that we cannot be physical uh, brains and fit in a vats. Okay, there, there you go. That, that's it. Yeah, you I've said, answered you. I've shown you. That's how it is. You said you're that we're born into physical, physical bodies. Make look bad. You said that their souls put into physical bodies. Check, check, check. Agree with all that. And then your brain is put into a vat. There's no contradiction there, Mr. Slick. Okay. So then uh, <clears throat> when God tells us that the human being who dies in his body, it really is the case that it could be a, a, a brain in a vat against what scripture says. Look, if you're going to argue like this, you need to at least study what our position is. I've offered Christ, uh, I've offered to teach atheists what we actually teach so that they don't make bad arguments like this. The brain is a part of the if body. The brain is the body, Mr. Slick, right? The brain is the body? Oh, oh are you okay. oh, are you going to say that the brain is the mind? I don't think you want to say that. So what's left? Oh, the brain's the body, isn't it, Mr. Slick? The brain is the body, the brain is the feet and the hands and, and the arms? The brain is body, isn't it, Mr. Slick? Wow. Uh, you said the brain is the body, so the body is the whole thing. Brain is brain a part is of thing. the body. Yes. Oh, it's a part of the body. Okay, so yeah. it's a part of the body. Okay. Isn't so, it? Isn't yeah, it? Okay. Or, you don't have to get upset now, do you? Or do you want to say that the brain is the mind? I don't think you want to say that, right? So in order to play this no, and I'm get out of this, that. you have to say that the brain isn't the body, but the brain is the body, isn't it, Matt? No, the brain is not the body. Oh, is it part of the it's body? Not, the brain is one of the organs in the physical body. Is it part of the body? It's one of the organs in the physical body. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's it's the body, isn't it? You said body. the brain is the body. It is body. It's like saying that the finger, that's like saying my finger is the body. That's no, a finger body. is body, right? Hands are body. These are all components of body, and so is the brain. So when you say, cite scripture and say, we die in the body, guess what? Your mind died in body, which is constituted by brain. There's no con Man, I just, you're just playing with words here. Oh, and I'm playing with words. To make yourself look decent. Yeah, you are. And so as the Christian worldview is that we are born in physical bodies and we die in physical bodies, that's what the Bible says that we are. So that's the internal view of the, of the Bible. To deny that, to simply to impose a value from the outside saying it's not true. And the way you're doing that is by offering this scenario of a brain in a vat, which is an external critique. Yeah, there's no, part of the Christian there's no conflict in the scripture that you just read. Let me ask you this. If you were a man... I just showed you. Yeah, and I'll show you. So if you're a man and you get your hand chopped off, what's left is your body, right? Right? See, so you don't want to. I can see you don't want to answer. No, so I, I I'll just go to the end game because no, I can, no, no, don't say I don't want to answer. I I read something in the text and I was a little distracted by something. So don't say I don't want to answer. You're not a good mind reader. So well, oh, I'm an excellent said. mind reader. Anyways, I'll just go. To, I'll just go to the end. If you're a, if Matt Slick gets his hand chopped off, what's left of is is his body, right? If you get your other hand chopped off, yes. what's left is your body. If you get your arms and your legs chopped off, what's left of is your body. If we take away everything but your brain, guess what's left? Your body, and it's a brain. So it's completely compatible with this scripture that you read. So the uh, definition or the, the uh, assumption in the Bible about what our bodies are, feet, hands, etc., and that Jesus exemplifies this, and uh, he was fully man, fully God, still is actually, hypostatic union. So that's what it's talking about. And the Bible says that we're born in a human body and that we'll die in our human body. That's what it says. Therefore, there's no room for a brain and a bad thing. No, there Next. is, and I just explained why. Next. I think I think Matt's done. So, as I said, I will. I'm just done with this. Yeah, I got you. I'm done with this. Stuff. I, I bet you are. Yeah, I this, got you. Uh, with I'm done with your faulty <laughs> line of reasoning. I've shown you and I repeated it. It doesn't matter what I say. You're just going to try and save face 
and try and continue to argue. I don't I'm have to you, make any internal, attempt to say that's, that's why I asked internal or external critique. You keep jumping back and forth. No, I don't. Realize it. no I don't. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, biblically, God declares that we're born in a physical body and that we will die in a physical body. The physical body is exemplified as hands, feet, nose, eyes, etc. That's what it says. For you to say, well, we could be brains and bad is to go against that teaching. That, therefore, is an external critique, not an internal critique. I've shown you this repeatedly. I've stated it, and you refuse to acknowledge it. Man, yeah, it's but that's interesting, though, that on your one, website, one last thing. You one last thing. It. It's not even yeah. <laughs> what you're saying isn't even a, a problem because not only could you be a brain in a vat, your objection is that that's okay, but you have to be dying in a physical body. Well, here's here's the real rub, Matt. The mat the mad scientist, the person who puts you in the vat, could put your brain back into your body and then you die. So you still don't know how you couldn't be a brain in a right. vat right now. But you worship the uh, flying spaghetti monster also with this kind of logic and thinking? Well, you mean, next. You mean this, good, this, logic good logic and thinking? Let's, let's go to somebody else who's more competent in, in uh, argumentation. Well, sorry, yeah, I'll just debate say, that. Hold one sec. I just want to say, Matt, it seems that you are holding it logically possible that Christians are brain in vats because your article on Calm talking about brains in vats says that if Christians are brains in vats, then does that mean that the Christian God does not exist? I see no logical necessity to say that there is no Christian Trinitarian God if we live in brains in vats. So I'm not sure why you're pushing back on it not being possible. Yeah, I never heard a contradiction. Well, you guys uh, can think what you want. I know what you're going to think. I know how you're going to think it because you're atheists. But I'm just telling you, he's guilty of an external versus internal critique, and he keeps switching. I've shown that, and I've explained it from the scriptures. And actually, I'm taking notes through it. I will expand that article. I do appreciate it because usually arguing with people you know, in a good way, uh, it helps me improve the articles and the issues that I raise. So I, I do appreciate that. But we're just going in circles at this point. And you're uh, committing a fallacy of, of exchanging internal and external critiques. That's all. Well, he asked. Well, I don't think the view. position of your opponent it. is relevant. I don't think the position of your opponent is relevant. I mean, he could write those questions on a piece of paper, and it, you could ask yourself, right? But I have a question about something else. I don't know what you just said, so I don't know. You can respond to what I said if you want. Couldn't understand you. I have. 80 decibel ringing in both ears. I have hearing aids. I have a slight loss of hearing. And if you mumble, which I perceive as mumbling, I'm not knocking you, I don't understand. And so I say, I, I, I don't understand. Most people can understand you and others because they don't have the hearing problem that I do. That's all I'm saying. I couldn't understand you. Oh, that's fine. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think that the position of the person who asks you questions is relevant because he could just write those questions down on a piece of paper or like you could ask yourself those questions. Well, I, I hear what you say now, but that's why I said internal versus external critique. That's why I said that. Well, if he goes with an internal critique, it does not allow his position to be true. He's not asking you an, in, an, in, an it's not an internal critique. It's an, a, 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 he's asking a question about your he's view. He, that's me, I, Haiti. This was Godless's turn. Matt can't right. do more than one at a time. Do people not know that? Jason didn't know. He just got here. Um, but Matt, I actually have a question about something else. I don't understand. How could God know anything? Because he couldn't. How could he justify like the laws of logic without begging the question? Uh, I think actually Jason, if he has a follow up, should go first because otherwise you're just completely talking back to it later. I think Jason should go first. Well, I sent him down for interrupting. I thought Godless and Matt were going to debate now. Yeah, Godless doesn't even know what she wants. Godless, though. do you want to debate like Matt Slick right now, or do you want do you want yeah. Jason to debate Matt Slick? Oh, now she wants to. Now she wants to. Matt. How does God know anything? How can he know stuff like the law of non-contradiction is true without begging the question? 
perspective, God is not someone who just knows that something is true. He reveals truth because he has all knowledge of things actual and potential and all possibilities, and they are a reflection of his nature. So the laws of logic are a reflection of his mind. He doesn't have to know if his mind is true. He knows himself exhaustively in the Christian worldview. So the question is a non sequitur in the Christian worldview. Well, I don't think a question can be a non sequitur because like a non sequitur is when like you fo you're following some inference that doesn't really follow. But um, wait, does God have, let me ask you this. Does God have the justified true belief that the law of non-contradiction is true? It's not, uh, you're misapplying it. This is why it's a non sequitur. You are misapplying this issue to God. It's not the Christian perspective. The Christian perspective is that all things that are universals, transcendentals, you want to call them, including the laws of logic, are part and parcel of his eternal mind. They're ref they are revealed to us. We, being made in his image, are able to think his thoughts after him. That's the Christian worldview. Okay. You said they're a reflection of his mind. I'm sorry. So does he have the justified true belief that the law of non-contradiction, which is a reflection of his mind, corresponds to reality? You see, that's another non sequitur, but you don't understand. No disrespect meant, but before the universe created, the only thing that was extant was himself and the Trinitarian communion. So to say that it's justified true belief in relationship to correspondence to other things is a non sequitur in the Christian worldview. It does not follow. God's eternal mind is existed in the communion of the Trinity, and there was nothing for in existing external to him for forever. There's no correspondence. It's simply a, a, an issue of what's in his mind and what he knows and what he's revealed. That's all. Wait, so he did or he didn't? So first of all, I don't know how he would know he was alone in the universe, right? Descartes' demon could be the case. How would God know it wasn't? But does he have the justified true belief or not that the law of non-contradiction is true? I'm telling you, you're making a mistake. Are you saying there is not an answer to the question? Look, it's a dichotomy, right? Answer you. It's a dichotomy, right? Well, Either he does have the justified true belief or he does not. There's no third option, right? Can you uh, explain to me? Let's go through this. It's for clarity reasons. Justified true belief. What, what is it? Yeah. So a belief is a proposition you hold to be true. Truth is that which corresponds to reality. And justification is like it's going to require some inference and it's going to be something that raises the probability that your belief is true. Truth that corresponds to reality is not the Christian worldview. So you're doing an external critique here. I'm just, you can ask yourself these questions, or I could write them down on a piece of paper and you could read them and ask yourself. Um, or God could ask himself these questions. Okay, so God could ask himself these questions, right? Before he created anybody, God asked himself, how do I know the law of non-contradiction? How do I justify my belief that the law of non-contradiction is true? What's his answer? For real? You're asking actually that? How do I justify my belief? No. That what? That the law? No, God. Of non-contradiction is true? No. Yeah. God, God, you said God can ask himself, how do I justify my belief that the law of, non of LNC is true? Yeah. Right? What's the justification? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to say this again. That is a non sequitur in the Christian worldview. In the Christian worldview. God does not justify anything within himself. We do not say that truth is what corresponds to reality. That's not the Christian worldview. The Christian worldview is that truth is what corresponds to the mind of God. God has a certain nature, a certain existence, and all the universals that exist are, let's just say, related to God's universal uh, ubiquitous and uh, omniscient mind. So he doesn't justify something as if there's another factor or standard by which he has to apply to himself. And that would imply something all other than him and ultimate besides him by which he then justifies his own existence. That again is not the Christian worldview. I'm just trying to tell you that no disrespect meant, but you don't understand the Christian worldview, which is why you're asking the question, which is why I'm responding with it's a non sequitur in the Christian worldview. It doesn't fit. Okay. Matt, I don't get this non sequitur thing. I don't know if you don't know what a non sequitur, but a, 
uh, is, but a question cannot be a non sequitur. What do you think a non sequitur is? But also, I, I, excuse me, I wasn't finished though. I, I don't, I didn't interrupt you once. Um, but also, so I really want to know the answer to this. Does God have the belief that the law of non contradiction corresponds to reality? Does God believe that? I'm going to write this down. Uh, not for the reason you think. What's your question again? Does God believe that the law of non-contradiction corresponds to reality? Uh, does God believe that the law of non-contradiction corresponds to reality? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that question makes no sense in the Christian worldview. So you're saying if God asked himself that question, he wouldn't understand it. God would be confused. Seriously? Yeah, if God asked, you're saying if God asked himself that question, he would be confused and he wouldn't know the answer. If God asked himself the question, he'd be confused. Yeah, I'm asking you, like, what would his if he asked himself that question, what would his response to himself be? So you're actually proposing something that's not the Christian worldview and then ask me how God would ask himself questions and what he would say. I haven't proposed anything. I've only asked questions. Yeah. Your question has propositions in it, has certain conditions in it. So don't play the game. I'm just asking a question. You have certain assumptions that are valid with or you're trying to make valid within it. So if God, the Christian God, asked himself a question, but that's a non sequitur in the Christian worldview. God doesn't ask himself questions from all eternity because he knows all things. He doesn't ask himself a question to find out something. That's not the Christian worldview. You keep making this mistake. I'm trying to tell you. Look, I'm just trying to understand your position. Because you said that like Christians don't hold to, the, you said God doesn't hold to like correspondence theory or something. So I'm just asking, does that mean that he doesn't believe that the law of non-contradiction corresponds to reality? I don't believe you're trying to understand. I believe what you're trying to do is find any hole that you can and you're ignoring what I'm telling you. Let's go this again. Okay. God does not ask himself anything. Okay, that's just one statement you understand that he doesn't ask himself anything the reason is because he knows all things from eternity so he therefore would not ask himself any question do you agree with that so far uh okay i, I think i understand maybe not but when you say he knows all things does that mean he has a justified true belief in all things i asked the question you've ignored the question i'm, I'm trying to ask you very uh, politely and very succinctly here you know, do you understand that it's not the Christian perspective? OK, God would not ask himself a question to ask the question tells me you don't understand the Christian worldview. Yeah, but it seems like that's just tr like you're just saying, oh, God wouldn't ask himself a question and try in order to try to get out of how God would justify this. So just with respect, you, you don't understand what you're criticizing. You don't understand the issue, which is why you're asking the question. Let me work this with you a little bit. God knows all things, First John 3.20. He does not grow in his knowledge or decrease in his knowledge. So from eternity, before the universe was created, God has always had all knowledge of all things actual, which would only be his own, his own self in the Trinitarian communion, as well as all things potential. There would be no increase or de decrease in his knowledge. That's a Christian perspective. You with me so far? Um, well, no. I don't, there's one thing I don't understand. When you say no, do you mean justified true belief? The Bible tells us God knows himself completely and, and sufficiently and totally. That's all I can tell you. That's what God does. God is not, is not, or I should say, God is not subject to the laws of logic as if they were externals to which he must then submit. They are part and parcel of his nature. The revelation, God is consistent with his own actuality, his own essence, his own being. He does not contradict himself and the laws of logic, which are universals, have their universal quality because they're abstract entities. And they exist in the universal way because God exists in the universal way. 
This is how we can justify that they have actuality. We don't justify God's existence by using the laws of logic. We don't justify his mind by them. That, that implies there's something beyond God to which he must answer. That's not the Christian worldview. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You keep making this same mistake. So when you say God knows, um, the word know, what does what what's the common property between when God knows something and justified true belief? Is there a common property? So I, I'm just gonna conclude that you don't listen to what I'm saying. I'm trying to understand. I, I, I'm giving you the answers. No, you're not. I don't believe you are. I'm just trying to understand. I don't know if you, I'm not sure what you mean when you say God knows, because I don't think you mean justified true belief. Is that correct? God does not have justified true beliefs or he does? God does not tell us what knowledge means in relationship of his own knowledge about himself and the spirit. He just says that he knows who he is and what he is uh, eternally and completely. That's all the Bible says. I can't go beyond what the scripture says in this perspective. Right. So when you say no, does, does it have any... Does it share any property with justified true belief? Like, is it a belief? Does God believe justif him? Sorry, justified true belief, right? JTB? Yeah, does God... The tripartite analysis of knowledge suggesting that there are three criteria, which must be met in every case of knowledge, right? Yeah, belief, a good reason for believing it, and that it's true. So you're saying now then the Christian God who knows all things is the author, the ultimate author of all things now has to have belief in something. So I'm sorry, are you saying God doesn't believe things? I, I Well, we have to define what it means to have belief. Belief is a proposition you hold to be true, sir. So does God believe in propositions external to himself? Uh, well, whether it's external or internal, I don't think is relevant it is in the christian worldview the eternal nature of god was by himself forever so he would only know himself completely and totally and as i already said all potentiality is simply that potentiality he brought it one realm or one thread of actuality out of an so, uh, proposed supposedly an infinite number of potentialities he knew them all exhaustively either by extrapolation or whatever way that god knows all things he does not define how he knows all things and so what you're trying to do is separate the issue of knowledge and logic from god himself and say now subject god to that i keep telling you that's an external critique it's wrong so when you say god knows all things like he knows all true propositions is that correct God knows all things actual as well as potential, counterfactuals, and he knows all the possibilities of what lies can be. So he believes the law of non-contradiction is true, correct? He doesn't believe it's true. I wouldn't say that about my God. I'd say it is simply true because it's part of his nature. Okay, does he hold that proposition, the law of non-contradiction is true? Does he hold that con that um, proposition to be true? Fine proposition. Well, I think proposition is very hard to define. I've People have tried to, it's, it's got to be something that's truth apt, but other than that, I wouldn't really be able to give a definition. Um, I don't think anybody really can. So you don't know what it means, and yet you're using it in a sentence. Do you want me to answer? Look, we do know what it means. We get to things that can't be easily defined, such as existence and stuff, but look, we're getting off. No, we're not. You ask no. about propositions. So I'm, I'm asking you to find. I'm talking to her. I'm talking to her. Talking to her. So. I want you to know, or I want to know, what do you mean by proposition? You want to go with G.E. Moore, Bertrand Russell? You want to go with uh, Frege? What propositional definition do you want to go? And then I got to ask you is, which one's true and why is it true? So you won't be able to defend it. And yet you want, to, want me to presuppose a value of some propositional statement, which you have not defined what it is, and then apply it to God, which I've already told you isn't what we do. I'm sorry. You work maybe hard. I would... You guys work hard at your own damnation. But, but keep going. Yeah, I would love for Jack to jump in if that's okay with you. But uh, I would also like for you to define the proposition because I don't think you'll be able to do so. I think you're fronting. Again, what? I didn't hear the word. Fronting. Flaunting? Do you have a, a definition of proposition, Matt? I don't think you do. Shareable objects of the attitudes and primary hearers of bearers of truth and falsity shareable objects some sort of like proposition or object that people can think about like grass is green Gottlob, he said the thought from 1922 frege is ex uh, explicit about the nature of the thoughts they are not part of the outer realm which consists of those entities perceivable by, by the senses i can go on i've done note uh 
uh, analysis on this. It's the atheists who bring up this issue. I have to ask them what they think it means. I don't do this proposition thing with God and subject God to propositional truth statements. Truth exists because the mind of God exists. God is the one who knows all things. And so truth is what corresponds to the mind of God, not some tro- proposition. See, you're, you're offering an external critique. You don't know the Christian worldview. I'm not mad at you. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just saying you don't know what it is you're criticizing and, and you need to study. That's all. I'm sorry. Was that a definition of proposition that you just said? <laughs> Did you not hear me read what it is? Well, I heard the word. The shareable objects of the. For one thing, I the heard the word. Shareable objects of the. I heard the word proposition in your definition. So why would you? I didn't understand what you said, but I also heard the word proposition in what you said. So why would you put the word proposition in your definition of proposition? That wouldn't make any sense, right? So the thing I'm trying to tell you is that God is the author of truth, not you and not the philosophers, whether it be Frege or Russell or Moore or whatever. And I asked you what a proposition was since you're the one who raised it with God and you didn't even know. I have to come in and help you out and say this is what the definition is that's been generally given. But then there's different people who have different views of them. Then I told you that I'm going to ask you which one's true. But you see, this isn't going to help you. When you ask about the issue of propositions and, and related to God, what you want, what I'm gathering, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm understanding you say is you're trying to get God to be subject to the laws of logic one way or another. And that's not the Christian world view. I just want to know how God justifies his belief, Matt, and all his beliefs are going to presuppose that the law of law, the law of non-contradiction is true, right? But yet he can't justify it without begging the question. Do you agree? He doesn't justify. His then he doesn't have a justified true belief. You're admitting he doesn't have the justified true belief. I think you, okay, you're admitting God does not have the justified true belief that the law of non-contradiction is true. I think you've been thoroughly humiliated and destroyed. Okay. Well, that's a nice fantasy of yours. But look, God does not justify his his knowledge using logic. He simply knows all things. It's not a justification. How? It's simply it's simply a condition of God's nature. How do you know? There's no justific there's no justification necessary if it's part and parcel of his nature. If he doesn't justify it, then he doesn't know it, Matt. Okay. Whatever you want to say. But you're not arguing the Christian world. Okay, view. so God doesn't have any justified true beliefs. The uh, then he's not omniscient. If he doesn't know okay. all true propositions, he's not omniscient, Matt. Can you define what a proposition can is? You, so we can see if can you? Them? You're the one who brought it up. I'm asking you. Well, do you believe that God um ha- holds propositions to be true, sir? What are the propositions? Define it. I already told you, it's very hard to define proposition. It's, it's something that's true then, that. You don't know what it is, and please don't uh, use it in a sentence and try to Okay, let's, me. let's, let's dissect your, de- your definition. Can you say it again? Is the law, no, wait. I, it's not my definition. Is the law of non-contradiction a proposition, Matt? It's not my definition. I didn't ask, I didn't tell you what my definition was. I'm telling you what the secularists are saying. Is the law of non-contradiction a okay. proposition, Matt? Well, it all depends what a proposition Well, let's go by your definition. According to your definition? I, I don't have it. Whatever. I don't have a definition. So you don't know what proposition means, Matt? Propositions have different meanings in different What's contexts. What's it mean to you? You want a universal one? Can you, you know, you are really upset, aren't you? What are you talking about? You. Yeah, you need to chill on the interruptions. Got Sorry. A little bit. You're the one who brought up the idea of propositions. I said, okay, what is it? You said, well, it's hard to define. Well, if it's hard to define, then don't tell me what it, and use it in an argument if you don't even know what it is. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Do you think you exist, Matt? Hello? Yes, I think I exist. Oh, yes, you just said, said the yes. word exists. Can you define the word existence without just merely referring to a synonym? Watch him fail. Everybody watch him fail miserably. Define the word existence, Matt. That which has actuality in space and time. Hang on, I'm thinking about the, what that means. That's which ha- what's actuality? That is that's which has actuality. Now, go ahead and ask. What does that mean? Now ask what actuality is. That was yeah. exists. Got it. Did God That's exist? so actuality is just a synonym. You just okay. gave a synonym. That means that God doesn't exist. Wait. So 
Look, we're, we're going in circles. You just gave a sentence. I, I said define it without giving it. Sorry, I'm for interrupting. I won't do it again. But you, I said define it without merely referring to a synonym. So that I which did. exists is that which has actuality. No, you said that which exists is that which has actuality, and the actuality is merely a synonym. But go ahead, Jack. Okay, no, look, but hold on before Jack, gets in, before Jack gets in. Look, I, I asked, you, you're the one who brought up the issue of proposition. I'm telling you to ask you to define it. You can't do it. You turn on the attack. And, and as far as I'm concerned, you didn't do very well. You don't understand the Christian worldview. And I really think you need to study it. And if you guys want sometime, I'll offer this for the umpteenth time. We can sit. This is meta. Study. Can we just, why are we doing this? Okay. Why? I guess you guys don't want answers, do you? No, I don't want meta. Unless these people do. Do you guys want meta? Hey, just, just stop. Just don't interrupt, He's gone. right? He's gone. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, like, you, just, you guys are just fucking animals, man. Fucking animals. You know better Go than ahead, who Jack. was that, Albedo? No, was that Daily Albedo? Shadow. Daily Shadow? Daily Shadow, you know better than that. Come on, man. He's like a rare Pokemon. Jack, are you there? Yeah. Go ahead. Thomas, you should have nailed him because he said actuality in space and time. But that doesn't exist in space and time on his view. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so God no, doesn't exist by his own definition. God doesn't exist. God doesn't exist by his own definition of existence. Really? Especially before creation. Right? Okay, let, now, let, me, let me slap that one down where it belongs. When did I ever say God does not exist in space and time? So prior no, to think... creation, did he exist? Yes. He was in space and time prior to creation? I don't know what space would be related to him. I don't know how time would relate to his nature. Yeah. Generally, time is conceived of as being a sequence of events. So since God can think and know and have interaction inside the Trinity, then it would require some sort of time, at least the implication of it, to be extant with that. I tell Christians, don't say that God exists outside of space and time because we don't know what that means. I just say he relates to space and time differently than we do. So I don't like to say what he can or cannot be or do in relation to either one. You should ask these things before assuming them from what I say. You made the mistake again. You guys are making lots of mistakes today. Wait, so you're saying that there's time prior to creation then, right? I don't know. I'm saying... I do well, have not be. know how time relates to God since one of the definitions of time deals with a sequence of events and it implies that there would be a sequence of events in the Trinitarian communion where is the expression of fellowship within that. The implication is there. I don't know how it would actually apply to the true and living God. That's what I'm saying. I, I thought you were saying that an essential property of existence is temporality. Did I misunderstand you? I didn't say temporality. Time. Time. I, uh, something wrong here? Uh, when you defined yeah. existence, you said in time and space. Are we doing God or Jack? time. Sorry, one I, of you has to go. I, I won't say anything else. Sorry. Who am I? Who am I talking to now? Is this a dog pile again? No, you're still talking to Jack. Jack. Oh, no okay. one else. He just cut okay. out. Yeah, I thought you were saying that that was an essential property. Did I misunderstand you? I don't know what the essential property of God's nature is. I, I don't I know how he relates about to God's nature. I was talking about what, how you define existence. I was saying, I don't know how time relates to God's nature. That's what I was yeah. saying. I'm asking you whether you said time was an essential property of existence. Okay. I don't know how time relates to God, so I cannot say if it is or is not an essential property of his nature. I wasn't talking about God. You, we, she asked you what, you, what, what existence. The? She asked you to define existence. And you said something like actuality in space and time. So are you saying that space and time are essential properties of existence? In some senses, I would say yes. But then we have existence of thoughts, which seem to have a sequence of events, but they 
they don't seem to exist inside of, of, of uh, I'd say, a, a spatial area. Uh, it went, when, like it look, can't. when she get, asked you for the definition, what were the words space and time doing there, if not functioning as essential properties for what existence is? You're hard to understand, just so you know. You're, it's faint. So I'm straining to hear every word you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. Maybe somebody else. I don't know what, why it would be faint. Maybe somebody else. Oh, no, I can else. hear you. Just barely. I'm just saying I can barely right, hear right. you. So if I miss something. I mean, I can okay. talk louder, but if, if, you know, if somebody else understands where I'm going me, with this, then maybe they me. can do it. Yeah, I can hear you fine. He just said that ex for ex existence is defined as... Uh, having time, like she's, actuality in time she, yeah, and time and space is what you said. And so what I'm trying to understand is, what are the words to, uh, time and space doing in that definition, right? If not um, specifying the essential properties of existence. I'm not a physicist, and I'm only offering the basic understanding and definitions I've heard. So if you want to cross-examine them, maybe we could have uh, time to do that and go through some dictionaries, go through some texts that talk about it so we can then see so we can get further along. I'm just telling you, I don't know how time relates to God's nature. I yeah, but I know. wasn't asking about God's nature. She was so, asking what your definition of existence is. I would just say that existence is what has, uh, it's a good question, I'm not exactly sure how to answer it. What exists is that which occupies, uh, I would say, normally speaking, occupies uh, space and time and has properties, things like that. I don't even know if that's a correct definition, but that's at the top of my head. Well, she was asking you for your definition. Wasn't yeah, I don't, know if it's a, I don't know if it's a correct definition. I'm just saying it off the top of my head, that's what it is. So. Now what? Well, I think she was asking you what you mean when you say something exists. Okay. So how has this got to do with God now? Well, because the okay. problem is... Because now we're, we're, off in, the problem, we're off in the minutia. Yeah, we're not getting anything accomplished. Well, the problem is that if time and space are essential to existence, right, then that commits you to saying that um, God's existence presupposes that he's in time and space including prior to creation no i didn't i don't i don't affirm that or deny it see let me say this again i don't know how they relate to god's nature i don't know how space and time relate to god's nature what we're familiar with is the physical world and all we can do is by analogy raise issues and comparisons and then say this is how it seems to be how god might be we have in theology a phrase that God is wholly other, W-H-O-L-L-Y. He's completely different than what we are. This is why I say to people, I don't know how God can be in all places and all time and be aware of all things. I don't know. I don't know how time and space, matter, existence relate to him. Because before the universe existed, God existed. So if we we're going to def define existence from a humanist perspective, it's not going to apply to God. So how does uh, existence relate to God's nature? That's where we have a problem. I don't know how to answer the question because I'm not privy to the very nature of God before the universe was created. I'm not able to answer that question, and no Christian can. When she asked you what existence is, how do you define it? And you said actuality in space and time. Were the words space and time there because they specify some essential properties of existence? I don't know if I was thinking, or I don't recall thinking that they were essential properties. She just simply asked me a basic question. I gave a basic answer. That's all. Yeah, but I the point know. is, if they're not essential properties, how do they constitute the definition? That's the Jack, question. I'm telling you, I don't know how it ultimately relates to God. Okay, is that okay for me to say that? I wasn't talking about God. I wasn't talking about God. Yeah, but I'm because talking about what you when she asked you about existence, what existence means, right? How you are defining existence, meaning what you mean by the term existence. You mentioned space and time. And if you're not saying those are central properties, what are they doing in the definition? Okay, there you go.
Not sure, okay, as or how it relates to God. All right, I keep telling you the same thing. I didn't she asked say me a thing about, about God. Excuse me, but I'm trying to get onto the topic. You guys are trying to talk about the nature of God. I forgot what the context of her question was. Now what you're doing is hammering me or tried to on this issue is an essential property. When I now when you ask that, I have to relate it to God. Therefore, I don't know what the essential properties of existence is, in actuality is, because I would have to uh, come up with a definition that would not exclude God, but is consistent with God's revelation in Scripture. Now that we get down that, deeper into it. That, that's all that I was saying, Matt, was that it has right? to be the case that if space and time are essential properties of existence, then God, if he exists would have to, uh, those properties would have to be predicable of him. So if it's not the case that those properties um, are predicable of him, uh, let's say prior to creation, then those can't be essential properties of existence. That's all that I'm saying. I'm saying that I don't know how they relate to God. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fine, but I'm just well, trying to get you to understand the dilemma. Right, the dilemma that it's not you a dilemma. have. Not a dilemma. What do you mean it's not a dilemma? Physical realm is different than God's realm. He's different yeah, than the created okay. order. So if yeah. you're going to apply category error, you can apply the existence defined in the physical realm to God. I'm saying we can't do that. I don't know how God relates to it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm trying to get you to understand what the dilemma is. And you're saying there's no dilemma, but that just means you don't understand what I'm saying. Really quick, let me try and help. Yeah, um, go ahead, Tom. Matt. That's all Jack fine. is doing, all all Jack, all Jack is doing, is he's making a conditional statement. If existence means you have actuality in time and space, and God, prior to creation, for example, does not have actuality in time and space or space and or space and god doesn't exist under that definition that's all jack's saying that's it that's it except that i keep telling you guys that there's a difference between the created order and the creator and that i don't know the relationship between god and that created order that's all i'm saying and i'm not going to say because i'm not a physicist to say what the proper definition according to physics is of what existence is because then we get to the issue of existence not only in the physical realm space and time but universals and particulars because this is one of the age-old problems of the one and the many and so i could easily ask the question well if you want to ask these questions about existence then what are you talking about universals and particulars then we can get into that issue see i can do the same thing and ask these uh, varying questions and you wouldn't be able to answer these things so i don't understand what the problem is because I'm just telling you that normally speaking, from what I understand, existence requires some sort of, of space and time. But then thoughts are something a little bit different, and yet they have actuality. And universals do too. Well, how does God relate to all this? I don't know. So that's all I'm saying is, okay, I don't know exactly how it relates, so let's move along. What's the big deal? Uh, What's the problem? Yeah, because when you yeah. say God exists, Matt, you're not really saying anything because you don't know what it means for God to exist. Just want to let you guys know. I don't know. To Matt. To Floyd that. wants to talk to Matt when Jack's done with this line of. I'm saying that I don't know what it means for God to exist as God exists. I can only know God exists by the analogy that he's given me in creation. Okay. Yes. There so you, you just don't know he exists. Don't know See, he exists. Yes. The problem, the problem is, right. That if you're saying that creaturely or uh, terrestrial existence or whatever, right, presupposes space and time, that those are essential properties of creaturely or created existence, right? Um, and you want to say that's analogous to God's existence, but God's existence doesn't have the essential property of... Um, being temporal or spatial, right? Then the problem is, in virtue of what does the analogy hold? 
There has to be some common property across the two for you not to be equivocating when you say God exists, in just as you might say that um, your wife exists, right? Or I exist, or you exist. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And my response has been consistent. I don't know what it is to have the essential nature of God as it relates to space and time. I don't know if these things are aspects of his nature and that the physical realm is an analogy of his existence. I don't know. I am working no, on but something. One at a time, please. Let me finish. That's all I ask. Okay. I thought you were finished. You you paused, Matt. Come on. Are you done now? Go ahead. Okay. So you're saying you made an analogy. Again, I don't know if you heard anything that Jack just said. In order for you to make an analogy which is what you claim to have done. There needs to be an analogous property. Something that's similar, common to both things in the analogy. All you do is keep repeating that I don't know how they're similar. So what is the analogous property in your analogy? What to what? God existing in the actuality in space and time sense, the way that you understand it in the human form and the God form. You said you're making an analogy, right? What's the analogous property? God thinks we think. That does take time, doesn't it? A sequence of events, would you agree? I thought you're supposed to be coming up with the analogous property as with regards to existence, right? What you did, what you did was just refer to the analogous property as being um, spatiotemporal, which is what you were denying as something that applies to the God's existence. No, I so you can't use that because you were saying that's not it, right? I wasn't denying it. I asked said that you don't know how space-time re re refers to God, and it's just an analogy. That's what you said. Yeah. So then Jack asked, okay, happens. if it's an analogy, then maybe it's not space or time, which is a common property, because you seem to have a problem with that. But there must be a common property, so what is it? And then you told me, God thinks we think, which is about time. But you denied that time was the analogous property. I did not. So is time the analogous property? That's what I was talking to you about. So I was asking you if God thinks and we think, because the idea is a sequence of events, which is the implication of time. Is that not true? Uh-huh. Is time the analogous property? I say the analogous property. I'm just saying there is a degree of analogy between God and man, since all relationships of revelation of God to us would be analogous. What's the problem with Okay, that? well, then you're in, pro you're in trouble again because now you're saying in your analog, in the way that it could be understood, time is the analogous property. In your bracket square one, where sans creation, there's no time, and therefore God doesn't exist. I didn't say that. You guys are desperate. I didn't say God doesn't exist. I certainly didn't say that time has No, that's the... I... Hold on, let me finish. I did not say that an analogy is a correspondence of one-to-one. -one. That's your mistake you're doing i say i don't know exactly how it works there's some form of analogy to uh, from god to us i don't know how it works then you draw, draw a necessary conclusion and god doesn't exist but it does it's not necessary out of an analogy which is by definition not precise so why are you guys i mean well i could ask why you guys are doing this. i know why you're doing it you know you you hate the god you don't believe in but the thing is here i'm I, the best you guys have got so far it's to try and hammer sub-definitions of things. That's that's the best you've got. And I keep telling you the same thing. I'm just giving you an analogy. I'm not an astrophysicist. I don't know what the nature of space and time is. And I certainly don't know how they relate to God. What's wrong with that? And you say, well, give me an analogy. You keep searching. You keep wanting me to find, want to find something. And I say a statement. Then you take this statement apart. I don't know exactly how it all works. 
you guys are just digging and digging and digging. Okay. Now yeah, we want to do the problem is really simple though. You're giving an analogy. Tom. You're saying it's say, it's the same in some way. And then we say, is it the same in the way of time? Because you said he thinks we think. And when he asks you, you say no. And then and then I ask you, okay, what in what way is it similar, right? You are right. In an analogy, there is some sort of commonality, but we have yet to even understand what that commonality is. Time. God speaks to us, and it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes sequence. So he does this. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That took, I don't know, let's just say five seconds to say it when God said it. So he relates to us in our time realm. Does it necessitate that it's a one-to-one -one correspondence of our realm to God's realm? In the Christian worldview, we wouldn't say that. We can say that God spoke to us. Does God have English words or Greek words or Hebrew words as they were or Aramaic at the time? Is that how he is in his nature and his essence? We wouldn't say that. We would cer certainly say that he entered into our world and spoke according to us. And that is by necessity an analogy. Now, how does that analogy relate to God's existence? I don't know. What's the big deal? You should just say, well, okay, you're right. We don't know. And from the Christian world worldview, you could not know. That doesn't mean he doesn't exist because I can't define how time relates to his nature. This is a mistake you guys are making. You guys need to come up with something better than this. Seriously. Anyways, um, I don't Tom, think this is. You've already blown it earlier. And. You know, says, I've shown you your mistakes you. earlier. Yeah, it absolutely says me. You're still salty so, about that, huh? Yeah, I'm very confident about it. And I'm, I'm, and so here you go asking this stuff. You guys are I just appear to me. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but you appear to me be desperate to find something that you can work against to to de continue to deny God's existence. Okay, that's your right. That's your perspective. No matter what I say, you want a subdivision or a sub definition of this and that and how this relates. And that's all that you're going on. And I just keep telling you, I don't have all the answers as it comes to this. That's all I'm saying. If you have something else you want to talk about, great. Otherwise, we're just going to continue going in a circle. All right. Matt, you prompted Can I... Nautilus to ask you uh, what existence meant. Can I ask a question and then going when back? She asked you. I'm, I'm just Hold on, there needs to be quick. one at a time. Come on, animals. And then when you responded, you said the, the time and space thing so confidently that you would think that it would apply to God. But you can't figure that out. I'm, we're trying to get that out of you. Yeah, I, I was uh, responding to uh, uh, Haiti, I think it was. I'm not sure. Who was asking me in a context, which I don't remember the context now. So now I'm not sure what to tell you. Okay. I gave a lecture once at an Orlando conference where the whole point of my lecture was to deny as emphatically as I could and as categorically as I knew how the existence of God. And when I began that lecture, I said, what my task is today is to convince you folks that God does not exist. <gasps> Came this gasp from the crowd. What are you talking about? What kind of game are you playing with? I'm not playing. I said, the worst thing that we could ever happen to us is to discover that God exists in the specific meaning of the term exist. Because the term exists in our language has derived etymologically from the Latin existere, which means, ex means out of, and stere means to stand. So somebody who exists is somebody that's outstanding. <laughs> but outstanding in what sense? Well, what was meant by this, this word philosophically uh, centuries ago, uh, going all the way back to Plato and before Plato, was the idea that there is being, pure and simple, and pure being depends on nothing for its ability to be. It is eternal. It has the power of being within itself. It is by no means creaturely. The thing that characterizes creaturely existence is not being, but becoming. Because the chief 
character trait of all creatures is they change. Whatever you are today, you will be different ever so slightly tomorrow. And today, you're that much different from what you were yesterday if it's only that you're 24 hours older than you were at this time yesterday. Now, the idea of existence says to exist is to stand out of something. And the idea meant to stand out of being. So that something that exists is something that has one foot in being and the other foot in becoming or in non-being. Unless it's connected somehow to being, it couldn't be. We wouldn't be human beings, we'd be human becomings. Uh, but and if it were had both feet in being, it couldn't be a creature. Now the point I'm saying is, is that we don't want to think of God like this. If you ask me, is God, I say, yes, of course God is. But does he exist? Not in this sense, because that would make him what? A creature, a dependent, derived existence. But rather, we say God is here. God is being, not becoming, not changing. He is eternally the same. And so we say there's one being. Now, within that being are not three separate existences. Remember the difference in the prefix. Exist means to stand out of being or non-being, but the word that the theologians use with respect to the Trinity is not the word three existences, but three subsistences. That is, underneath the pure being of God. At a lower dimension, we must distinguish among these subsistences, which the Bible calls Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Not three existences, not three beings, but rather three subsistences within that one eternal being.